G'day ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Draw with Jazza. I'm Jazza and today we're going to be drawing Wolverine from the X-Men series. So getting started, we begin as I usually begin with construction lines. So we get the pose and the basic shape of the body. In this case, Wolverine being a large bulky figure, he's got a very large upper torso uh, and bulky arms and a bit of a hunched pose. So when we get the basic sketch in and a few little refining details, I, uh, I lighten my construction lines and go in with another darker gray and add a little bit of detail just so I, before I get to the line work, uh, know a bit more about the shape and uh, the way things are put. So in particular, things like details of the face and in this case, anatomy, because uh, the muscles are showing in a way that I want to communicate uh, quite a, in a more effective and clear way where things are. So now that I've done that, the next thing I'm doing is going to the line work. Now, uh, this is always a different sort of process because with uh, very cartoony characters, things are a bit more bubbly. With comic style characters like this, uh, while it is uh, a bit bubbly, it's also uh, based on a lot of line weight variation and stuff. You want to get more of a stylistic look, so you don't want it to be too bubbly, as I was saying. Well, I don't know why I keep saying bubbly, it doesn't mean anything. Anyways, so going through, making sure to have a good variation in the line weights, uh, basically knowing when it should be thinner and when it should be thicker. And also keeping in mind, again, less is more. That's an important thing that I constantly say because you don't want to add too many lines, random lines. For example, in the muscles, I've added these random thin lines to kind of show the ripped nature of the muscles, as people would say. So, uh, you know, with you know no fat content in his skin and large rippling muscles, he's going to have those lines because that's how the muscles are divided. But if you do too much of them, it ends up looking either grotesque or unrealistic. So anyways, going through, I've added a few details like rips in the shirt uh, and some of the things on the fingers. What do you call them? Knuckle lines. But I've left the claws out. Reason being is uh, the, the shape of them is going to be tricky to get, so I'm going to do them separately. So I do this first by on a different layer drawing red lines in the direction that I want to find them and then I draw the claws. Now this is all on a separate layer, uh, whether it be in Flash or Photoshop, whatever works, but that's because I don't want to mess around or uh, screw up the line work I've already done of his body. So I'm going through and doing this separately first and then afterwards I'll be combining them. So it takes a little bit of refinement because it's quite difficult to get uh, the accurate proportions and perspective of the claws when they're curved and on an angle and kind of panning out like that. So it takes a bit of practice and understanding shape uh, and things like that. But when I got them to a place that I'm happy with them, I merged them with the original drawing and then I'm ready to do the coloring. So the step in which I do the coloring, this is a, a common thing that I do in cell shading the coloring is I outline the areas of where the shadow go. Now in this case, I wanted it to be a fairly dramatic sort of light. So I wanted a, a backlight, nothing in the front, but all kind of highlighted from the back. So by by uh, sorry, drawing the lines uh, outlining where the shadow goes and filling the shadow in mostly the center part of the image uh, and leaving the rims of things uh, for the highlight really brings out that dramatic lighting. Now even for the ripped lines on the muscles, uh, leaving a little bit of highlight on there too helps give a bit of depth there. And uh, on darker things like the hair, um, having a higher level of contrast is a, a bit helpful too. If you have a white object, like the white of the uh, tank top that is wearing, uh, it's good to keep it sort of a cream color um, and then a bit of a gradient for the claws. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is how I drew Wolverine. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to leave in the comments below your suggestion for my next Let's Draw video. Thank you for joining me, ladies and gentlemen, and until next time, I'll see you later.